Well, guys, it seems another thing we predicted in 2020 or 2021 is coming true because the BBC reported that legacy vaccine uptake is going down the toilet. This is not really surprising to me and is actually something I said would happen last year when the never-ending coercion to get it was in full swing. This we all know and I have shown in my recent compilation for anyone who forgot how bad it was. Sorry. I think Spain are worried because of uh, infection rates. Uh, they're, they're worried about their um, uh, health services being mm. overwhelmed. Uh, and they want the message to be out there that even on a beach, if you're looking at those pictures that we've just seen, if you're on a crowded beach, mm. there's a risk of transmission. Uh, and in theory, if you go swimming in the sea, you should be wearing a mask. It goes, <clears throat> vaccine, 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 vaccine. I'm begging of you, please don't hesitate. Vaccine, 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 vaccine. Because once you're dead, then that's a bit too late. <laughs> This morning, no, I was told the BBC reported yet another legacy vaccine has seen a large decline in uptake, like I said. Good morning from BBC London. I'm Thomas McGill. Young people are being encouraged to get their meningitis vaccine after new research found uptake has been worryingly low in London. Experts say nearly one in five 18 year olds missed their routine vaccine in secondary school, leaving them unprotected. Yeah, there you see it, and this goes with other stories in the past six months that have said exactly the same thing. Now, obviously, the BBC didn't point out the fact that some of this drop in uptake will be down to how the BBC and others acted over the past 18 months. Many people who once trusted the government, media and healthcare now question that trust given the abuse of it we've seen in recent years ramped up to the max last year, of course. The use of coercive control, outright bullying and all that have smashed the trust for most people and to be honest I doubt that will ever come back for many. This though was a predictable outcome as even politicians pointed this out during bat flu if my memory's correct. Madam Deputy Speaker, our freedoms are like the air we breathe. They're fundamental to us as a nation and to who we are as its people. Yet once again we stand on the threshold of using the rule of law to undermine the rule of law, the foundations of which have been laid over centuries. And can I say this, Madam Deputy Speaker? We are not asking our constituents to do anything we have never asked. We have coerced them. We have coerced them through criminal and civil law. Let us not use that word, ask, because it is not an accurate description of what we have done. We have criminalised freedom of association, the freedom to go about one's business, the freedom to travel and the freedom to protest. The freedom to protest. That is the oxygen of democracy. I will have no part of criminalising parents for seeing their children and children for seeing their parents. No part. And I am not living in fear of the virus. I will not live in fear of the virus, but I am living in fear of something much darker, much darker hiding in the shadows. And, Madam Deputy Speaker, when the sunlight returns, and it will return, I hope it chases those shadows away. But I can't be sure that it will. The question we as legislators have to grapple with is whether coercion is the answer and, whether, and what might be the unintended consequences of mandating vaccination for some of the lowest paid and most undervalued workers in our society. Now we discover that a vaccination may be a passport to the acquisition of your civil liberty, liberties, and without which you will have all sorts of things that you would be able to do denied to you. Shit, any idiot should have seen it a mile off because it's not exactly hard to work out at the end of the day, is it? In fact, the past two years won't just affect trust in medicines as I've said before, it's also going to affect people's trust in much of what the state claims for many years to come now. This is the outcome of their actions and surprise surprise the BBC didn't want to admit their part in it. This is why we the people must remind them what these tosspots actually did. Why will you be able to buy a pint in a sports venue without getting anything to eat? But if you order a pint in a pub, you'll have to have a substantial meal. I'll leave that hanging as the great existential question of the day. <laughs>